Okay, so uh, I've been working on this for uh, you know the past few days, and uh, with everything that's going on, I have to kind of move on. Uh, so I just wanted to do a kind of a quick video, and I was just going to post it on GitHub. Um, you know, it's not complete, but I kind of got to move on. So, you know, the general idea is, you know, we have multi-layer uh, timeline, and we have cues that we can, you know, place down. You can select it. There's an outline. Um, you can do multi-select, and you know, the ones that are kind of like in the normal touch designer look. You know, the most recent one you select is white. The previous ones are yellow, um, and then you can still, well, um, you know, you can drag them all and uh, you know do multi-select, which is pretty cool. And um, let's see. So you know, one of the things <laughs> I was pretty happy with was the zooming. So you know, we have this kind of zoom effect and you can actually use the keyboard so it's control plus minus so you can zoom in with the keyboard um, you can scroll so if you turn off camera follows playhead you can you know scroll through by holding shift in the up and down wheel mouse wheel so you can do some pretty cool stuff with that um, but I like the camera follows playhead idea so we have some just basic Controls. I didn't. Yeah, you know, I didn't really get a chance to do too much with it. Um, inside of whenever you click on a cue, it changes. It uh, changes this here, so you can make some changes. Let me just pause that. So like this cue here, you know, we can change the in and out duration. So this is a fade in, and you can change that duration. So. You know, the idea was that you would send this data to your playback engine, uh, which is kind of still a work in progress. And you set your queue lengths, um, and then you set your start time. So, you know, when you're when you move this around, you're changing the start time here. And then you know, the idea was that you'd drag over here, you'd shorten and extend it uh, by doing that. Uh, but you can move, and yeah, so you were, the built the function here is kind of built in. So you just set the layer, and it will move it up and down. And so it shouldn't be, it wouldn't be very difficult to add that the functionality of moving it, you know, moving your when you drag the cursor, you know, moving it up a layer should be easy because you just have to do this. I just don't have, I just have to move on. Um, so. I guess I can just run through how it's built internally. So the way this is structured is we have our time code. And this is very optimized, this time, these time codes, uh, readouts. They're very optimized. Um, the layers, this is also a 3D, this is a 3D render. Um, let's see. So yeah, inside of here, you have the render. The canvas, the cues, the layers, and they're all they're all separate here. So, the render, you can kind of take a look. Um, we have some main camera here, and then we have the settings camera. So, um, you know, I didn't want these to be affected by the zoom, so I put that on a separate camera and a separate render. So, you know, when you zoom out, it doesn't affect this 3D. But I did like attaching. You know, I wanted to attach the camera to when I scrolled up and down. So, all right, so the canvas here. So this is like the background. We have the background. We have the you know, lines, uh, hash marks, tickers, whatever you want to call it. And then we have, this is the layers. Yeah. Um, you can't really see it. It's dark there. but um, And then we have, let's see, what is this? This is the playhead. So. When you're when you're when we're playing, this is kind of just moving, moving in space, which is pretty cool. So the cues, I mean, this is kind of this one. This is fairly complicated. We have, you can see everything's kind of lives in in this 3D environment, and everything is instances. So we have.
have, and then these are these are the uh, tweens that I have here. So these are all instanced geometry. So your cues here, and these components are actually just your uh, information, your instance information. So you know when you what cue is this? So zero q zero. You know when you move this around, you're changing your instance data and so like you come in here background color you know that that changes here which then gets updated that's an ugly color I'll make that something nicer um, so the outlines are all handled in the shader um, I didn't want it tie it to any texture so I just put that into the shader I don't really know a better way of doing that but that ended up working out fine <laughs> this this is a uh, same thing instance geometry it's relatively relatively simple so you just have start with a line it's and I'm instancing the, the line I have each one of these is a, a line that's four points. And then inside of the vertex shader, I'm just repositioning it based on I'm feeding it some, I'm using this instance three, instance three uh, page. I have the fade in, these are the four positions. So, and then this is the, this is the height of your queue. So, you know, when I change, so if I come in here and go to settings, and I go to the Q height, so I can change you know, all this. This is very, you can kind of do whatever you want. And <laughs> that's one thing, when you go past the layer, it expands it, which I actually is kind of annoying now that I look at it. But yeah, so that scale of the Q itself is actually adjust, is being fed to this, uh, this vertex shader from one of the custom attributes. The idea is basically, uh, you know, we're taking all this data here, the timing data, we're sending it to the time components. So here we just have a replicator that's just, you know, grabbing each one of these corresponds to a queue and each queue has kind of some info here. So we're gonna feed that, you know, so the fade in, fade out, the length, the big, so these are, I guess this is directly going to be part of the segment dat. So the begin, the length. Um, so then if you kind of look in here under the time, so we have um, the segment dat. So if you look here, I can just, you know, you can expand this. And so you can actually see that these are lined up. So when this playhead, as the playhead mo moves, it's, you know, it is following this, this timer. So you know, it would be, wouldn't be too challenging really to kind of line this up with, with a movie. So, you know, to actually play the movie that is under, I mean, these, yeah, right now you would want these to be thumbnails and they're actually playing, but that's just, you know, I kind of ran out of time. Um, let's see, so, yeah, I mean, that's all being fed there, and I'm doing the, I'm sending, here, I'm sending out the time code. So the, coming out of this timer, time component, I'm sending out time code to that other time code component up, up at the top level. Looking at the layers, um, Let's see, so yeah, the layers, each layer has the layers that are being rendered by this second camera over here. Um, that's just it, really. It's just instance, it's in, you know, again, instancing. Because I wanted to be able to easily click on it, so I didn't want it to just be one object. I didn't really feel like dealing with clicking and then dealing with UV coordinates, so I just. You know, the whole thing, the whole system really goes off at instance ID. 
So these are all just different different objects, different rec you know, the rectangles. I mean, I think that's, I mean, I at least did kind of an overview of kind of how the overall structure works. I mean, you know, everything's kind of tied together. All, like almost all the settings for the entire system are right here. So uh, user settings, we have user settings, system settings, and even a lot of this, a lot of these are actually just calculations where I'm able to reference these anywhere in the project. So I'll be posting some other touch designer videos as I uh, move into different projects. Um, so feel free to subscribe and, uh, you know, definitely create a branch and fork this and try to use it.